Welcome to the Fit Small Business QuickBooks Online Training Course. In this lesson, we're going to cover how to manage credit card sales with a third-party credit card processor in QuickBooks Online. To follow along with me, log into your QuickBooks Online account now or click the link below for a free 30-day trial of QuickBooks Online. You can also click this link to access our full QuickBooks Online course and other helpful resources. Let's get started. Nowadays, most people don't carry cash and fewer still are writing checks. If you want to cater to as many customers as possible, you will need to accept credit cards as a form of payment. Credit card processing companies offer this service for a fee. Many QuickBooks users decide to go with Intuit Payments as their credit card processor because it's fully integrated with QuickBooks Online, so your accounts and financial statements are always up to date. If you use Intuit Payments, click here to watch our tutorial on how to manage credit card sales in QuickBooks Online. If you use a different credit card processor, the steps for managing credit card sales are a bit different. That is what this lesson will cover. For more information on credit card processing, be sure to read our article on Best Merchant Service Pro Providers and our guide on credit card fees. Let's begin. There are two ways that you can record customer payments in QuickBooks. If a customer pays you immediately, you would record a sales receipt. However, if you have a credit sale, which means that your customer pays you sometime in the future, then you want to record a payment for an invoice in QuickBooks. Let's begin with the sales receipt. From the home page, go ahead and click on the plus sign at the top and go ahead and click on sales receipt. The create sales receipt window will display. We will complete these fields for our fictitious company, Paul's Plumbing. From the drop down, you want to select the customer who, is, who you received the payment from. The billing address information will auto populate with the information that is in the customer profile. In the how to set up customers lesson, we walk through step by step to show you how to set up the customer information. Click here to access that tutorial. The sales receipt date should be the date that you made the sale. For our payment method, we want to select credit card from the drop down. The deposit to field. This is the bank account that your credit card payments will be deposited to. If you want to change the account, you can do so in this screen by clicking on the drop down and selecting the account. I recommend that you use the undeposited funds account to hold all credit card payments. This account is automatically created by QuickBooks. Consolidating all credit card payments into the undeposited funds account makes it easier to combine multiple credit card payments if you need to in order to match up with the bank deposit amounts. The next field you want to complete is the product or service. So from the drop down, select the product or service that you sold to your customer. It will automatically populate the description field. This field will automatically populate based on how you set up your product or service. For more information on how to set up products and services, click here to watch our lesson on how to set up your products and services in QuickBooks. In the description field, you can also type a custom description. If you have a quantity, you can go ahead and enter that if applicable, and you can enter a custom rate here. QuickBooks will multiply the quantity times the rate column to get the amount column. At this point, you should process the credit card payment for the customer as you normally would outside of QuickBooks. Once you have that credit card approval code, you want to go ahead and enter that in our reference number field on this sales receipt. Once you've completed all of the fields, you can go ahead and click Save and Send. There are a couple of things that will take place behind the scenes in QuickBooks when you do this. First of all, the send email window will open up so that you can review the email that your customer will receive along with a PDF copy of your sales receipt. So here you have the ability to make any changes that you'd like to the subject of the email and to the body of the email. You also have the opportunity to review the sales receipt to make sure it's the correct one that will go out with this email. Once you have made all of your necessary changes, you can click the send and close button. Refer to the written lesson to see how the sales receipt will impact the financial statements. 
Let's go ahead and navigate back to the sales receipt and make sure that our payment was applied correctly here for that sales receipt. So we'll go ahead and go back to the customer center. If you click on customers on the left hand side, and then scroll down until you locate the customer that you received the payment from. And at the top, the most recent transaction will appear. Under the status column, you will notice that it now says paid. If your customers don't pay you immediately for a product or service, you would record their credit card payment on an invoice instead of a sales receipt. So let's go through the steps for recording a credit card payment for an invoice. From our home page, we want to go ahead and at the very top, click the plus sign. Below the customer's column, you want to select receive payment. The receive payment window will display and we'll go ahead and complete these fields for our fictitious company, Paul's Plumbing. From the drop down, you select the customer you're receiving the payment for. Our payment date field should be the date that the customer is making the payment. Our payment method for this transaction will again be credit card. In the deposit to field, you want to again select the bank account that the credit card payment should be deposited to. Again, you can change this account if you'd like to. I recommend that you consolidate all credit card payments into the undeposited funds account as we've mentioned before. And we will see how this works in the next step. Right below that, you want to select the invoice that the customer is paying. So it looks like our customer Jenny just has one outstanding invoice, so we'll go ahead and select that. When we put the check mark in the box, QuickBooks will automatically populate the payment field here and the amount received up at the top. At this point, you should process the credit card payment for the customer how you normally would outside of QuickBooks. Once you have the approval code, I recommend that you enter that code in the reference number field here. Once you have done that, you can go ahead and save and close. And again, let's navigate back to the customer center to make sure that the invoice that Jenny paid, that the payment was applied correctly for that. Click on customers on the left hand side and scroll down to your customer. And let's locate that invoice. There we go. And again, the status here is showing paid. Once you have processed credit card payments in QuickBooks, the next step is to record the deposit of those payments into your bank account. Depending on the type of credit card, payment may not show up in your bank account for several days. However, when it does, you will need to follow these steps to record the deposit. So from the home page, we'll go ahead and click the plus sign at the top of the page. And we're going to go ahead and navigate to the bank deposit window. If you are using the undeposited funds account to hold your credit card payments, then you will need to follow these steps to transfer those funds out of the undeposited funds account into the bank account where the credit card payment was deposited. If you used your bank account to record credit card payments in QuickBooks, then you do not need to complete these steps. So in the first field, we want to select the bank account where the credit card payments were deposited to. So you can simply click the drop down and select the bank account from there. In the date field, we want to go ahead and enter the date that the credit card payments were deposited to that bank account. So we'll make our selection here. And then below, we want to go ahead and select the credit card payments that were deposited. In general, credit card payments may be combined if they occurred on the same day or the next day. Therefore, you may need to select multiple credit card payments to match up the amount that was deposited to your bank account. In this example, we've had two credit card payments that were deposited. They were both processed on September 22nd and they were deposited on September 26th to the bank account. So the amount that's showing on the bank statement is $1,900. So it's the combined amount of both of these credit card payments. So once you know, once this amount agrees with your bank statement, we can go ahead and save and close this transaction. Refer to the written lesson to see how recording the deposit will impact the accounts and the financial statements.
Please note that your merchant account processor will charge you fees for accepting credit cards. You should set up an expense account called Merchant Fees or Credit Card Processing Fees to record all the fees that you will be charged. In the How to Set Up the Chart of Accounts lesson, we walk you through step-by-step -step how to set up new accounts. Click here to watch that video tutorial. That wraps up the lesson on how to manage credit card sales with a third-party processor in QuickBooks Online. To access our full QuickBooks Online course or any of the other lessons in this series, click this link. You can also find a link below this video for a free 30-day trial of QuickBooks Online. If you have feedback about this course or if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe.